I didn't quite read a book for every day of the month, but I wasn't far off. Uh, let's talk about everything I read in February. Welcome back, or if you are new here, welcome. My name is Katrina and I make bookish content here on this channel at least twice a week and then movie reviews or book to movie content here for you at the weekend. In the description box, you will find all of my social links, including my blog, my Goodreads, where I post reviews of most of the things that I read. I try and keep up with it. Um, yes, let's talk about it. If you are new to my wrap ups, I talk about um, books in the kind of book that I read. So ebooks, physical books, audio books. Um, and yeah, this month I nearly read something for every day of the month. If you missed my February TBR, I will leave it linked up above because you might want to watch that first to see how I did with my goals. Um, so let's talk about ebooks. First of all, uh, I read a Sky Full of Stars by Danny Atkins. This is adult fiction. And if you want to see how much this book made me cry, you can watch my 24 in 48 hour readathon reading vlog um, because I go into much more detail about just how many tissues I used with this one. Um, and then a couple of blog tour books that I didn't put in my TBR um, because I may or may not have forgotten that I was on the blog tour for these. So we have... Uh, what the World Needs Now Bees, um, which is a picture book. It's a series about things that the world needs now. So thinking about um, trees and like recycling and climate change and looking after the world and they're designed for children. Unfortunately, I didn't love this one. It really kind of like missed the mark. I think it didn't know who its audience was. So there's a picture book and this bear takes you through it. I love the illustrations you can see from this. It has absolutely gorgeous illustrations, but there was just too much like technical language and um, kind of like simplistic sentences but with then very like scientific concepts in. So it was like, well, are you aiming this at children to be able to read themselves? Are you aiming this at parents to read to children? Are you aiming this for teachers to use in the classroom? Because either way, it's kind of like missed the mark. It's like you tried to go for all three when I feel like it should have gone for maybe one. Um, there was also a thing where she talks about um, things being in Alaska, Canada, North Mexico and United States. And I'm like, well, if you've mentioned Alaska, you've already mentioned United States. I don't know why we've had to mention it again. And then the other ebook I had for a blog tour was Kissing Lying Down with Kate Tuff. Um, this is a collection, as it says on the cover there, of six short stories to do with like romance and dating and relationships. And it was a really refreshing take on these because um, it looked at not just the positive sides of it, but the kind of negative sides as well and realistically what online dating looks like and realistically what happens when you kind of meet someone as a bit of a holiday romance and then try to make it a little bit more. Um, there was one of these stories that does come with a content warning as well which I thought was really refreshing. It's not like a content warning for the whole book, it's just for that particular story. So if you wanted to skip that one you could do um, and a lot of these are set in and around Glasgow as well which uh, if you've been following the channel for a while you will know that that is my favourite city in the entire world. So um, I appreciated that and I really enjoyed this one um, and if you go to my blog you can read my full written review of all six stories. Um, then moving on to um, physical books. I, I have more physical books to show you this month. It's so exciting. Uh, again, if you've been following for a while, sometimes the physical book section has zero books in it, but we have six books. Um, first of all, I have The Dating Plan by Sarah Desai. Um, I've seen a lot of people either really loving or really hating this, and I just kind of feel like I fall somewhere in the middle. Um, so I feel like there was parts of this that I did really enjoy and then there were parts that I didn't really enjoy. Um, I saw Bethany talking about this one on her channel and she DNF'd it because she hated the main male character. I really hated the main female character and I was kind of like rooting for the male character to get a bit of rescuing in this one. Um, but this was the kind of like second fake dating slash marriage trope 
the Ulse, um, and the second book that centers around a distillery that I'd read this month. So I think it kind of felt a little bit like comforting jumping into it. Um, I really liked Daisy's love of superheroes um, and I liked Liam's like Irish heritage. Um, but a lot of the time I wasn't kind of rooting for either of the characters. And so it was like a real mixed bag for me, but um, I did feel the need to finish it and see how it ended up. So I guess this is one of those ones where you're gonna have to decide for yourself. Um, but yeah, this is adult romance. And um, I think, I don't know if I would pick up anything by this author again, because this is not her debut, but it does definitely read like a debut. Like, oh, she stepped out of her white bed into her warm, cozy slippers and slipped on her fluffy gray robe. Taking steps tentatively across the room, she went over to her sleek Nespresso machine. You know, everything was very, very described um, and that kind of bothered me a little bit. I did find myself skimming some of the more descriptive bits to get to a bit of dialogue. Um, so if, for that reason, it was a bit of a quick read as well. Um, and then again, a couple that you'll have seen if you saw my 24 in 48, I'll leave it linked to the description box. Um, I read Shine Your Icy Crown by Amanda Lovelace, which is the um, follow-up to Break Your Glass Slippers or Break Her Glass Slippers and it's just wonderful and I talk a little bit more about that one in um, that video but I love the fact that we've got some just beautiful illustrations in this one just show you quickly. I love Amanda Lovelace. I have um, a playlist of my sort of poetry videos um, and I have a whole video talking about her previous poetry series. I'm just trying to see if there's any more illustrations to show you. Oh, just, just stunning. Um, and obviously, uh, Shine Your Icy Crown and Break Your Glass Slippers are based on fairy tales. And I have the Target Special Edition of this one, which is why it's blue, Cinderella blue and not grey. The other one is grey. Um, so I, I couldn't work out why I couldn't find the cover online. And then I realised it was because it was the Target Special Edition. So love this, obviously. And then speaking of gorgeous illustrations, I read the graphic novel of Long Way Down by Jason Reynolds, which is like the shiniest book you've ever seen with its library cover on. Um, but this one is just absolutely stunning. I listened to the audiobook of A Long Way Down just after it first came out. I love Jason Reynolds' writing. I just, I just love his writing. And um, I was lucky enough that my library hosted a book event, an online book event. And so I could hear him speak speak and ah, oh, it was just wonderful highly 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 recommend this graphic novel um whether you have read the book or listened to the audiobook or not just the graphic novel was just wonderful um and then another poetry book that i read this one is homebody by rupi kaur you'll know rupi kaur from writing milk and honey and the sun and her flowers i have a gorgeous special edition of the sun and her flowers and so i knew i wanted to get homebody if you see my most recent book haul i will leave it linked up above you will know that i took some books to my local second hand bookshop and traded them in and bought this with the store credit that I got. Um, this one is definitely more hard hitting than both Milk and Honey and The Sun and Her Flowers. Um, she goes into a lot of personal detail in this one, some of which, which is quite uncomfortable to read. It can, I would say this contains kind of care warnings for most things. Um, so just look up the trigger warnings, care warnings for this one if you're thinking of picking it up. But again, you can see that I've tabbed a lot of things. There is so much truth in this one. I love the way she is so brutally honest, but in a beautiful, poetic, like performative way. Um, and I don't regret buying this one in any way, shape or form. Highly recommend if you are okay with the care warnings. Um, and then... I was embarking upon a Christina Lauren readathon this month. I actually really love the fact that my reading month was like very, very structured this month. I think it's why I ended up reading so many books. So I had one Christina Lauren book that I was reading each week. I will leave that video announcement linked up above if you haven't seen it. And you need to make sure that you are subscribed and have hit that notification bell because Hayley and I read all of these books together and we are going to have a live show coming up for you next week talking about our thoughts on each each of these books. Um, so I read six Christina Lauren novels all together um, and only one of them I ended up reading as a physical book. This is My Half Night Stand by Christina Lauren which was I think the 
third week of February we read this one and I just wasn't getting along so well with the audiobook and I think it's possibly because there are like text conversations and like um online dating like emails back and forth and instant messenger conversations and although some audiobooks do that mixed media form really well I was finding that it was it was getting really sort of distracting as I was reading the book and I actually turned off the audiobook picked up the book where I'd left off and basically kind of didn't put it down again until I finished it I really enjoyed doing this one as a physical book and while some of the others you know didn't necessarily weren't the best audiobook that I'd read um I think that um perhaps I should have switched to the physical copies of those because I do have them all I think from my library um so yes, this was the uh, final physical book that I read, but I think it's really interesting. It's a rare thing that I would switch from an audiobook and prefer the physical book. I've done it the other way around before. I've been much more engaged by the audiobook than the physical book or the ebook. But in this case, I much prefer the physical book. So if you're going to read this one, highly recommend. And I will talk a little bit more about kind of why and what I thought of this particular book in that live show with Hayley. So you'll have to wait until then. Okay, now moving on to my biggest chunk, which is always audiobooks. Um, I this month's no exception, even though I had a few ebooks and a few physical books, it's still the biggest chunk is um audiobooks. So the first audiobook that I've read, which I cannot find my picture of here for you. That's what she said, which I was on the blog tour for as well. I like being on the blog tour for an audiobook. It's always an interesting one because I think it makes me more analytical about how it's read and how the audiobook is produced. Um, and this one is um, kind of business advice from various different people and kind of like reclaiming that that's what she said phrase. Um, I enjoyed it. Not everything applied to me, but there was definitely things that I found motivating and definitely were things that apply to kind of me and this channel, um, which was interesting. Um, but yes, uh, that was the first audiobook that I read in the month of February. Then of course I read Firefly Lane by Kristen Hanna and I have a whole book versus movie on this one so I will leave it linked up above so you can see my full thoughts on the book and the movie because I go into quite a lot of detail specifically about the book and I listened to that one on audio. Another one that I read for a book versus movie that is coming up so again make sure those notifications are turned on. I listened to the audiobook of Behind Her Eyes by Sarah Pimbera and I have already watched the um, Netflix series and I have already filmed my video so it's it is coming up soon, could be next week. So make sure you keep your eyes peeled for notification on that one. And of course, another book versus movie. We have always and forever Lara Jean. This is the um, tie-in movie cover here. It was a re-listen for me. I re-watched the um, movies and I re-listened to the audiobooks and then I watched the movie for this one and I will leave my book versus movie for this one linked up above in the description box, in the end screen, wherever it needs to be so that you can see my full thoughts but it was lovely rereading this one. This is of course that lovely YA romance series by Jenny Han um, and I have a whole playlist actually of my Jenny Jenny Han book versus movie. I review this series and it's, it's a whole Jenny Han playlist. So I recommend checking that out. Then speaking of um, books which are set around <laughs> distilleries, we have The Dog Share by Fiona Gibson, um, which I loved because this takes place around a distillery on a Scottish island and I was transported over there it made me want to drink whiskey um, and Fiona Gibson does a really good job of writing main characters who are kind of later in life so they maybe are um, years into a marriage or just leaving a long-term relationship and kind of like what happens next we have all these rom-coms about boy meets girl and they fall in love and they live happily ever after but then what happens next what happens when you are about to turn 50 and you're no longer in love what happens um and I just love Fiona Gibson for kind of like telling it how it is um 
yes she is somebody i would love to have on the channel actually absolutely love that um then we have um a couple of books that i listen to via the penguin random house volumes app they have audiobooks for review um and so i listened to all rise by nick offerman which is kind of like a audio um recording of a sort of stand-up comedy thing that he did talking about um like America and it's it's an audio perambulation um and he talks a little bit about politics and about decency and of course about gumption um and about how he he is not Ron Swanson he has a whole song talking about that one I really enjoyed it it felt like an elongated podcast episode um and we listened to that one while we were doing the jigsaw puzzle and so that was really great then I listened to as far as you'll take me by Phil Stamper, which I absolutely adored. Um, I can't believe that, uh, yeah, Phil Stamper made me manage to miss the passport hall at Heathrow Airport, which when you've just got off a nine hour flight from Denver or more, if you've had multiple changes, um, you're not feeling great in that position there. And it's kind of like herding cattle in there. It's not the nicest place to be, but he managed to make me wistful about it um this has the same audio narrator as did um the gravity of us and at the end of the audiobook they actually have a little bonus interview um discussing what it was like to kind of narrate the two different books because the books are very different and the characters in them are very different as well and so i really like that little bonus interview at the end and um you can see me reading this one in that 24 and 48 hour reading vlog um but that is why a romance and I really loved it and I kind of like I could see myself definitely rereading that one because I just really enjoyed it and I love both the covers but I think I prefer the US cover that was the US cover that I was holding up there um then let me see what else did I listen to <laughs> a whole load of audiobooks I listened to Fat Chance Charlie Vega and I basically binge listened to this one and this one she talks about um kind of it's fiction, it's YA, and she talks about, you know, being the the fat friend in her group and how her friends don't realise that she can't buy anything except accessories in straight size stores. And it's like, yeah, I remember going to New Look with my friends and like picking up some shoes or picking up some earrings or looking at a scarf because there was nothing in the shop that would fit me because that particular store didn't have a plus size section or like even her mum doing it to her and she's got a very turbulent relationship with her mum and I really really love the way that they kind of work that out and work through that and how it affects both of them and where it's come from um but I just I I identify with so many parts of this book um and yeah just that whole how horrible high school is just it was it was giving me lots of lots of flashbacks um some good some not uh and then oh surprise surprise another book versus movie i will try and leave it linked somewhere for you um i read the very short story of the map of tiny perfect things by lev grossman and um this one was originally included in an anthology um uh, but then they i think they must have released the audiobook standalone for the movie being released on Amazon Prime because there is a big author's note at the end so the book is just over an hour and then there's almost half an hour of author's note with him talking about how he wrote the script for the movie and how it differed and what the challenges were and how long a process it was and then the end of filming the movie being during Covid times and the challenges that that posed and so that was really interesting so if you enjoyed the movie and you want to know a little bit more I recommend recommend the audiobook because of that author's note you can kind of hear a little bit about the process and then um one of the first audiobooks I read towards the beginning of the month I read um Milk Fed by oop, Melissa Melissa Broder um and this one takes place I think this one takes place in Chicago, which was quite interesting because I feel like, oh, did I just picture it being in Chicago? But um, this uh, main character has a lot of issues around food and kind of links 
food and sexuality and so it was just it was a bit stream of consciousness style to listen to but i think that that often lends itself well to an audiobook this is like adult literary fiction um it doesn't pull any punches it's definitely fairly graphic when it comes to the sex scenes and the thoughts about food and definite care warnings for this one if you um, have any sort of uh, disordered eating in your current or past um, because yes I could definitely be triggering but I really enjoyed it and I liked like I say I think that stream of consciousness style does lend itself well to an audiobook and so I enjoyed listening to the story as it developed and I think it was another one where I kind of listened in one big chunk because I really was into that world and into her mindset and then a few that I have physical copies of we have the Christina Lauren reads that I will be talking about in more detail with Hayley we have Josh and Hazel's guide to dating um the audiobook for this one Hazel's side of it was fine but Josh the narrator put on a very stupid girly voice for her and really I found that very distracting so I think I probably should have switched to the physical book of this one but again talk about more that that more in that live video um then we have twice in a blue moon the thing that i appreciated most about this one was the fact that our main character lives in uh in an apartment on her own in midtown manhattan and it explains how she can financially do that and i really 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 appreciated that it got very real um and yeah bit of bit of fake dating fake marriage and another irish guy in this one it seems to be like the theme to my reading i'm not i'm surprised i didn't kind of get like muddled up <laughs> i don't know um and then we have the honey don't list which is the last one that we listened to um again this one has like emails and um a kind of transcript of like officers taking evidence at a crime scene and it has text messages but it works okay with this audiobook I did this one completely on audiobook and just tracked my progress in the physical book but um I think it worked fine and you can again see what I thought of that one in our live show and then the one that I don't I haven't had a physical copy of actually have I got two that I haven't got a physical copy of or have I left one behind me no, I have two that I don't have a physical copy of. We have uh, The Unhoneymooners by um, Christina Lauren, obviously by Christina Lauren. Um, I don't know, that one might be my favourite, but I also really, really loved. Do you know what? This is, I'm getting Twice in a Blue Moon mixed up with Roomies. This is the one where they do the explanation of how she can afford a midtown Manhattan apartment. There you go. This is why I need to film this live show right now because otherwise I'm going to forget about them all. But Roomies, obviously also by Christina Lauren. Um, and these are all adult romance. Um, I don't know, maybe Unhoneymooners or Roomies are the ones that get the most steamy. But the way people talk about these novels, they talk about them being sort of really steamy and the sex scenes being like, whoa. And I don't know, I've read a lot of romance and rom-coms where the sex scenes get a lot more spicy than these. Um, and so I, I have to admit, I was a little bit disappointed because I'd been promised some decent sex scenes. There wasn't anything particularly saucy in um, any of them. Um, yeah, definitely compared to Inner Holidays, a couple of them have more on the page sex. That doesn't really have any. Um, but yeah, I'd be definitely interested to read their other series because I feel like the covers of those ones look like they might be a little bit more sexy but we'll see and then finally I listened to Dearly by Margaret Atwood which is um poems I don't really know what I was expecting from this one um there's some longer poems some shorter poems I have read Handmaid's Tale and haven't read anything else by Margaret Atwood but I was like oh Margaret Atwood and poetry let's pick it up I saw this one in Target and then I saw if my library had it and they did um and they also had an audio copy so I decided to listen to it because I quite like listening to poetry at bedtime um it wasn't my favorite poetry book definitely I preferred the other two poetry books that I read and 
sort of think of Jason Reynolds writing even in that graphic novel as being very poetic and being in verse um but yeah it was interesting definitely some of the poems struck more chords with me than others um and it's divided into sections as well um and I, th I think it's a beautiful book um but yeah divided into sections and then you can kind of I like the fact that it has a contents page actually because I was like oh I like that one or I you know like that one and so I can kind of go back and re reread some of them having listened to the whole thing from start to finish um so there we have it 24 books read in the month of february which i think is pretty good i read everything that i put on my tbr and then i read some extra audiobooks and a couple of extra ebooks as well i know i know there's never normally that much on the list in terms of physical books and ebooks so it's it's like a bumper month um make sure if you haven't already seen my march tbr it's quite structured as well and we're going down the route of um doing some some authors <laughs> profiling an author and reading one of their books each week so um i will leave that one here in the end screen thank you so much for watching if you are not already subscribed hit that subscription button and that notification bell so you don't miss out on that live show or those future book versus movie videos that are coming if you enjoy this video give it a thumbs up and uh, let me know in the comments what you read in february did you hit your goals did you find anything spectacular let me know and I will see you with another video very soon. Thanks for watching.